Um, so first off, can you just recap what the season was like going into that 66 game against Michigan State? Yeah, uh, you know, there was a lot of attention given to that, obviously, because we had two very good football teams. And uh, as, as things got closer, it was uh, defining itself and it was becoming apparent that that was going to be a very big football game. And one of the things I remember, the Monday before that game, I had butterflies. And normally the butterflies wouldn't start until probably a, a Friday. And being a Michigander, I'm from Detroit, there was a special uh, interest on my part, I guess. So it was a heightened awareness. So, But I had butterflies on Monday. And then the press, all the attention, uh, it was just destined to be the game of the century. And, and did it really live up to that in your eyes? Was it really the game of the century? It, it absolutely did. You know, I, I got knocked out of the game early on, unfortunately, in the first quarter. I was covering a punt, and I got uh, a bad ankle, so I was out of the game. But the short time I was in the game, it was as hard-hitting a football game as I've ever played in. And I played seven years in the NFL before I blew my knee out. So. It was everything it was made out to be, and it was a hard-hitting football game. There's no question. And if you look at the assemblage of talent on the football field that day, that might have been the best football, you know, talent-wise on two teams in the history of football. Wow. And, and to, to take a step back, you talked about all the hype and all the buildup that came up to this game. Was there any stories or any moments that kind of stuck out to you leading up to that game that you, you remember besides the butterflies? Well, one of the things I remember is that we were getting so geeked up and prepared for the game early in the week that Tom Pagna, he was the offensive coordinator, and he played for Era and was Era's right-hand man on offense. He would try to take a little air out of the balloon so we didn't get so geeked up that we would lose our edge for the game. So he would try a few things, but all it did was just add air to the balloon. It never accomplished his, his goal of relaxing us and then picking us back up again. So that's one of the things I remember. So the game's over. It ends 10-10 in a tie. You guys stormed back to make it a 10-10 tie. Correct. What was your feeling after that contest? It was kind of an empty feeling. You know, there's a lot of uh, terms and cliches, half a loaf, kissing your sister. But there was kind of an empty feeling because there was no final resolution to this big hyped up event. So, uh, and then you reflect on it a little bit about why Era, not necessarily why Era did what he did because one thing people don't remember about that is that Duffy Doherty kicked the football to the Irish with a minute and 30 something left. And I'm pretty sure Duffy, Duffy knew he wasn't getting that football back. So. You know, you can say who went for the tie. Eric got the onus put on him, but I would say take it back a series when, when Duffy kicked the football to us with a minute 32 because Eric went for a first down on fourth and one when, he, when they kicked it to us. So he did some things that, you know, didn't lend itself to getting blamed for that tie. So just go back to Duffy kicking to us is what I, I ask my Sparty fans to do. So it's been 51 years since that game. You guys finally get to reunite. You get to both come together and have this weekend. What does this weekend mean to you? It's pretty special. Again, being a Michigan kid, we've made a couple efforts to try and pull this off in the intervening years. It just never happened. So finally, uh, unfortunately, there's too many of us gone. You know, you got Bubba, Charlie, and Webster. We've lost Seymour. We've lost Regner, Duranko. Uh, too many gone, but it's, it's great. It, it finally happens, and it's long overdue, but I think it's a wonderful event. Who are you most looking forward to, to seeing here at this reunion? Well, you, Pat Gallino and I, uh, you know, we worked on it with Bob Cantrell, and we're both Catholic League guys. So I hadn't seen him in a lot of years, so it was good to, you know, connect with him again. And some of the other guys from Detroit here, Don Warnke, Sterling Armstrong from Michigan State, but, you know, there were 10 Catholic League Detroit kids on, that, on those teams that day uh, in 66. So kudos to the Catholic League in Detroit. It was a great league. And then finally, uh, just kind of reflecting on all the history that's been between these two institutions, both of them helping each other out in different sure. ways, what are your thoughts on this rivalry just overall? 
I'll tell you, it's a very wholesome rivalry. We, we will fight till the death on the field, but you're off the field and we're pals. And we, uh, I'll give you an example. We played in the North-South game after our game against Michigan State. We went out to Southern Cal, beat them 51 to nothing. We were number one, UPI and AP. We went down to the North-South game, four guys from Notre Dame, Duranko, Gedeke, Horney, and Kanjar. Four guys from Michigan State, Bubba, Charlie, Richardson, and Pat Gallinaw. We got together with the exception of Pat. I think he was going to church. But we got together in our rooms on Christmas Eve in Miami singing Christmas carols with Bubba, uh, Charlie Thornhill, and Jeff Richardson. So that was just a month after that hard-fought battle up in East Lansing here on November 19th. So it was, it was forgotten. We were best of friends, and it was just a great, great experience. It was fun. Sounds like it. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. You're welcome.